the most important part of the storm system these days. So let's track that and I'll show you not going to last. We have a pretty wet pattern into the south and east um, and southern plains throughout the entire week. It's off and on here and looking at some risk of rain in the forecast. There wasn't a tornado warning at the time. There was some rotation, but not not the classic sort of tight rotation. So there wasn't enough to issue that tornado yeah. warning, but scary. Wow, Steele figured he'd have to hike out once his food ran out about day 35. But his nearest neighbor was 20 miles away and the snow was knee deep. It's a decision he's glad he didn't have to make. I can't imagine, Jim. I mean... Huh. No kids. Exactly. So Everything is so saturated. Now we got a lot of spring like weather, almost summer like here <laughs> off and on, right? But it just hasn't added up uh, for everyone across the Midwest. That said, we got a little more snow this morning tracking in through Green Bay. I saw a couple of spots with more than two inches um, of snowfall. Lacrosse, you're waking up to another round of snow that you got to brush off your car this morning. And so this next disturbance is moving on through. That'll head into the north and east. And we got another one coming on in tomorrow. It is no rest for the weary here. If you're sick of just this kind of persistent gray, to the sky as well as the snow showers, but we do it again this morning. Here's our latest uh, little storm. Next one tracks up. Some moisture comes up for this next one from the south, so that'll give our Wednesday system just a little more juice to work with. So we could see some bigger snow totals, I think, out of this. Still, you know, it's on the order of a couple of inches, but you will be maybe uh, having to shovel out your driveway a little bit tomorrow morning before you leave. All right, so <clears throat> your forecast for snowfall. We go to one to three inches. This is through tomorrow. One to three inches widespread. You go north and we could get about three to five. I saw Duluth and International Falls already picked up a new coat of snow this morning. Green Bay for us tomorrow. We get into it with a couple of snow showers just before lunchtime, continuing right through the afternoon and could be affecting your travel. And icy wicked over the weekend. We had what three quarters of an inch of ice up around Alberg in Vermont. Now today, yes, you know, it's obviously we have a Certainly cooled down since our warm temperatures in Boston and New York City over the weekend, but it's still not cold by any stretch. So let's watch this next system come on in. Wednesday to Thursday, it tracks into the northeast. This will bring some accumulating snow mainly to uh, the north. So we're talking about Vermont, New Hampshire, northern Maine. That's where we will see the air cold enough to get into some of that snow. New York, it's rain. Boston, it's rain. This is your Tuesday forecast here for this first system coming on through. Then we get into that next one Wednesday into Thursday. This one coming in from the west. Look how far north the rain is. But Buffalo, you're in the rain. Albany, maybe a wintry mix, but more rain than anything else. Maybe finishing with a little snow there and back towards Buffalo as well. But you can see how, you know, anything blue on our map is farther north. So we're talking about northern parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and up into Maine as well. That's where we'll see the accumulations tallying up more than, you know, three to five inches of snowfall. Top amounts will be five to eight, but that's going to be at the top of some of the mountain peaks. Uh, for us in Boston and New York City and Bridgeport, we don't have any snow in our forecast this time. It is going to be rain. But look at Portland, Maine. We've got some snow coming in overnight tonight. Temperatures in the low 30s and a big accumulation, but definitely a sloppy mess for you as you get into this evening and overnight. And second verse, that research center, and the, I mean, it's amazing. Those dolphins, um, you know, the personalities that they have, just amazing. All right, let's go traveling today. Maybe you're going to Florida, maybe you're going to work. We've got your commute forecast covered here. For a lot of you, it's going to be a soaker. We've got travel for you this morning across the south here, watching for thunderstorms that will be putting down some heavy rain. And there's a lot of lightning as we start your day here today. Birmingham, uh, Atlanta, luckily for now, you're in the clear. Everything's sort of damp because we had rain yesterday and nothing really dried out and there's a lot of fog this morning so don't think it's going to be free and clear um, even if you don't rain but the rain does move in lunchtime and continues for the ride home from work on I-20 from Birmingham to Atlanta there is also the chance for some severe weather especially back towards Jackson some hail maybe quarter size hail as well as some gusty winds possible with these thunderstorms today not to mention the lightning and the heavy rain will which will also cause a flash flooding concern and each year, more deaths occur due to flooding than from any other thunderstorm related hazard. And it seems like no matter how much we tell drivers to turn around and avoid flood roads, we, we still see the images of people getting caught in potentially deadly situations. So this is a reminder that if you don't heed the warnings, that bad decision could be your last series of systems that are coming through the country from west to east this week. They're all coming into the west first. So we had one yesterday, another one today. We have more winter weather advisories that are posted and the snow, especially at elevation, adding up to feet feet of snow. The most impressive spot has been um, at Mount Rainier there at the ranger station. They started the year 2020 with 40, I think it was 49 inches of snow on the ground. And now we're up to like 143 as of yesterday. We added more yesterday. So we got like 100 inches of snow in the first, uh, you know, 13 or 12 days of the year.
Here we go with more again today. We're going to see that snow for the Cascades travel as well. We'll get a brief break before the next system comes in. But when that comes in, we're going to see another round first of some rain. And then we'll see as the cold air filters in behind it, getting back into some snow. Seattle, it's possible. Portland, um, we'll see if there's enough cold air to get you more than, you know, a slushy inch or so of snow out of that one. But the mountain's definitely adding up. And for, for travel over the passes, this will be an impact event. You can see we've got, you know, at one and a half to two feet of snow here across the Southern Cascades down into California we bring this as well and then over into Idaho we've got more snow coming your way as well here's a closer look at Seattle we've got snow through Friday about one to three inches for Seattle so in the lowlands we're going to get a little more snowfall here you go up to the Olympics you know we've got another half foot of snow you go to the Cascades we've got nearly two feet of snow in the forecast and slow ride, take it easy. That song may be the message for people waking up to dreary skies. It's right to the mid-Atlantic. Just a lot of moisture, a front that's not going anywhere, a pattern that feels more like spring. So, yes, we're waking up to thunderstorms again this morning in Mississippi, into Alabama, and over into uh, eastern Tennessee now. Thunderstorms on the move. Greenville now under a flash flood morning. This is new for Dermot, Greenville, and Leland. This goes until 745 local time. You can see how we're in the oranges and the reds on the radar indicating some of the biggest rainfall um, one to two inches already and more is moving into this zone. In fact, we've had 2.8 based on radar estimates here just south of the Greenville area. So yeah, that's a lot of rain, especially for an area that really doesn't need any rain considering how wet it has been. Huntsville, we're getting into thunderstorms right now. Knoxville, here we go. They're on your doorstep. If you're an early driver to work, if you like to get in before anyone else and get started, I might wait this out because it really is going to be some heavy rain when these come on through. Plus the rain extends all the way up into Virginia. Rich and Norfolk into a wet commute this morning. And storms moving through Mississippi on Friday. Causing hey, thunderstorms are out there to start today. You just saw around Greenville where you are um, looking at that chance, or Greenwood, I said, of, um, of some flooding rain. One to two inches of rain in the forecast here throughout much of the southeast. You know, it, it's going to be adding up over the next two days. We've got this area of possible flooding, including around Jackson, up towards Greenwood. Tupelo, you're not quite in the possible, but you're in the zone where you could get too much rain at once. Everything is so saturated. Have your kids been running around in the yard and they come in and they're just so muddy and there's just nothing you can do about it because they want to go out and play. It's nice out, right? But you have to worry about the rain. You have to worry about these thunderstorms, which could get a little feisty. There is the chance for storms with some small hail or the risk for some you know, brief gusty winds with any of these storms that do pop. Plus, you know, when you get into thunderstorms, you get into some of the heavier rainfall. We see that today, today sink a little further south. And the front that we're dealing with here, we're calling it quasi-stationary because it's not exactly stationary quasi stationary. It's moving a little bit. So it's going to move south and it's going to wave back north. And so we'll see that corridor of where the thunderstorms focus shift a little bit over the next couple of days by Thursday, moving back again a little further south. And then by the time we get into Thursday and Friday, we're going to shift our ten attention into Texas. For us here in Asheville, North Carolina, we've got thunderstorms in our forecast tonight into Wednesday and again on Wednesday night. Look how warm it is, 69. All right, from rain to snow. A bit foggy, as you can see, looking at the tower cam this morning. In the forecast, as we look at this late week storm, so this is now our Thursday into Friday storm for us in Chicago, we do have a moderate chance of getting some snow here, at least those northern and western burbs. The heavy snow is going to be up there, I think, into Minnesota, into Wisconsin, and both models showing us that, right? Chicago, light snow in the forecast based on the GFS model. So let's talk about how this all plays out here. There's still model differences, as you might expect, you know, this far out in the forecast. But we are going to see by the end of the week, Thursday into Friday, both systems taking shape. You know, the low upper low from the north slides in. We get that moisture coming in from the south. This system will have of the week the most moisture to work with. So we're going to have the biggest totals coming our way. That includes a Minnesota, Wisconsin, what will be snow. Chicago starting as some rain, finishing as some snow for us. Kind of like what we did last week. Just um, I think we'll uh, it's moving through a little bit quicker, perhaps. Then to the northeast we go and that low pressure off the northeast coast could really give us some uh, snowfall into northern New England, especially, you know, depending on how how much it deepens. The Euro model forecast taking this over here. Chicago again starting as rain, ending as some snowfall. All right, so then we get into the weekend. So let's go ahead and take a look at that weekend forecast here. Your weekend in view, getting into the rest of this week, Thursday, Friday. Talked about that system tracking to the northeast. The southern side of it, we've got the rain, and that moves back into Dallas. We're not going to see a big thunderstorm outbreak like we just saw this past weekend. But we are going to see some rain, some heavy at times, and there will be some thunderstorms, I think especially into parts of southern uh, and maybe even a little bit western Texas. Getting into your Friday, here we go, watching everything come together across the middle of the country. All colors on the map, we go from 
the green to the pink, indicating the chance for some ice with that overrunning. And then we see that farther to the north. Then the northeast, we go into your Saturday. Um, Atlanta gets rain on sun Saturday. Then on Sunday, we get temperatures dropping back to the 50s, back to normal, really, for a lot of you, colder than normal to the north. And take a look at what's going on here into the southeast with rain this morning. You probably heard that rain last night in Nashville coming down. The thunderstorms are now east of you, but we still have a few showers left behind. The storms continue back into northern Alabama and Mississippi, where flash flood warnings remain in effect. And this is the zone that we're looking at for the potential of flash flooding. Several flash flood warnings, including um, in Holmes, Humphreys, and Yazoo counties until 745. This whole area has already had two or three inches of rain. The thunderstorms are training right over that area. The ground is saturated. The streams are, are full. So yes, we can't handle any more. Then we go to the travel concerns here. If you're traveling 24, heading towards Chattanooga, you are in thunderstorms this morning. Some of that rain heavy at times. Not a fun ride either on 95. Richmond, we've got rain this morning to start your day. And in terms of the rainfall, how much can we handle before we get to flash flooding? Well, when you look at just an hour and the southeast here, these colors where you're in the oranges and the yellow on this map, this means that you know, if it's yellow, we could take one to two inches in an hour. But if you're in red or into the orange, either a half inch to an inch or even less than that, like over here in northeastern portions of Georgia, a lot of Tennessee can only take about a half inch of rain in a one hour period before flooding will happen. So that's a concern that we have here in the southeast. And that's the case back into Mississippi, too, where we just can't handle that much rainfall. Chance of thunderstorms could bring you some small hail or some gusty winds. Um, Jackson, Greenwood, Meridian, Birmingham. Yep, today as those storms track on in, it's possible you could see some severe weather. I think heavy rain and rain on the roads and the fact that it's foggy this morning, those are going to be your biggest challenges. Another one to two inches of rain in the forecast into the south and east Atlanta. And it's not just today. Yes, tonight you have more showers. And yes, again tomorrow and again tomorrow night. When are we going to dry out? So many of you are asking. Well, the weekend, but it's going to take a minute. All right, a new round of snow in the Midwest. Going to need that this morning. Now, I don't know if they'll be running the plows. Everything has been pretty light up here snowfall wise. Most spots, one to two inches of snow. It's now snowing in Green Bay. A uh, little bit of freezing drizzle, though, and freezing mist has come in behind the snow that fell overnight. So that's going to be, I think, the travel hazard this morning. You know, maybe the roads were salted, they were cleared, whatever. But now that you get that little bit of a freezing drizzle coating on them, that could make some for some slippery spots. All right, so today. Today, one system moving through the Great Lakes after yesterday's, it moves into the northeast. There's another one coming in. It has been one after another pretty much every day this week, right here coming in from the Midwest to the northeast. Thursday system in the northeast here has a chance to strengthen a little bit more, has a little more moisture to work with, and will bring some bigger snowfall into the north and east. And we see that in the forecast through Thursday, mainly up north and at elevation. That's where we end up with five to eight inches. You got to go north for that. Look, northern New York, up in northern Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine. Um, any Anywhere here, like back into western New York or northwestern Pennsylvania, it's about an inch or two, you know, maybe three, that type of scenario. Then we go to our next system, though, um, coming into the Midwest tomorrow. That brings us about another one to three or maybe three to five inches of snow to the north. It has been a very busy week here with these little systems coming through places like Green Bay. We had one yesterday, another one today, um, another one tomorrow. Comes through late morning, around lunchtime, and continuing for the ride home. Temperatures about 30, 31 degrees. And Syracuse, it's Wednesday night into Thursday. Then it gets cold. Look at that 12. All right. All man winter is making another to my mom a couple years ago. She just same situation. It didn't, didn't look icy, right? But she's walking out on the sidewalk or the driveway and whoop, down you go. Um, this morning, actually, I'm worried about that in places like Minnesota, Wisconsin, because after the snow went through, you got a little freezing, freezing drizzle. And so you're going to have some slippery spots. We already picked up some snow here over the past couple of days. It, you know, it wasn't a lot at once, an inch or two, but it added up for some of you to more than five or uh, even six inches of snow, especially in central Wisconsin. But here's what's happening this morning. There is a little bit of snow still left around Green Bay. This Minneapolis is more like a, you know, flurry mist freezing type um, issue for us. So be careful on your front steps. It might be slippery. Then you see the general flow coming in from west east. Another system tracks through the Midwest tomorrow. It is so busy. This pattern. It is one after another here. So get ready today. One exits the Midwest. Another one comes in tomorrow. Here we go. Same kind of system. We're going to see some light snow amounts coming in with this one as well. We take you through today. System um, for today leaves and then system for tomorrow comes in overnight tonight. Tomorrow morning. It has a little more moisture 
moisture to work with compared to the other two from this week. So it's, you know, it's another couple of inches kind of event, but it adds up after a week, you know, an inch here, an inch there, two inches there. Um, yes, yeah, so you're going to um, have a little more that you got to clean up again, sweep off the front of your car, your uh, windshield tomorrow morning, yet again into Minnesota, north of Minneapolis. It's about a one to three inch event. There'll be some of you who think they get a stripe of a little bit more, but it's still not the big one like we're going to have at the end of the week, Jim. But this one does set up. It, look, it's winter. You expect it to be colder. You expect some more ice. We haven't been having it. Then we have had to travel delays in Chicago. You had a tough weekend because of that, you know, light snow in the area caused some cancellations, caused a lot of delays. Now the fog today is our biggest issue across the country for air travel. We do have rain in the south. That's causing more driving issues than anything. But we have a lot of low cloudiness out there. And I think it's going to cause some air travel delays. We'll keep an eye on Kansas City. We may see a few of these thunderstorms creep up to you, but you have some low clouds and fog first. Atlanta, it'll be the storms that get you later on today, but low clouds this morning. And the same thing for us in Dallas and Houston. The fog, we have so much fog out there, so we want to make sure you are safe. Here's a reminder, actually, of how dangerous fog can be on the roads. Uh, Federal Highway Administration, 10-year average, 25,000 crashes for fog, related to fog. Injuries, more than 8,000, more than almost 9,000, actually, and 464 deaths related to fog on vehicle accidents on the roadways. And we have a lot of it, a lot of low visibility. Houston this morning, both airports reporting some low visibility all the way up I-35 as you make your way towards Dallas. Um, quarter mile visibility on your way from Wichita over towards Kansas City, where we're down to an eighth of a mile as well. Luckily, we are above freezing. Kansas City, we're, we're about 40 degrees this morning. So that is pretty lucky because it's January. And when you see this kind of fog this time of year, you're probably thinking, oh, this could be freezing fog. It is just fog, but it's the kind of fog where you might miss your turn. Uh, you got to watch out for kids at the bus stop here. And it really doesn't improve until we get past about 9 or 10 o'clock this morning. Steph and Jim. So when someone gets in your family, everyone gets it. Our cold and flu tracker actually shows us how widespread that big drought happening in Australia. How does that flooding actually relate to the drought in Australia? That's what I want to talk about with something called the Indian Ocean Dipole Event. Look at the Indian Ocean and think about the surface temperatures, and you can compare this to an El Nino. We're going to look at where surface water temperatures uh, are above average or below average here. And when you have a negative Indian Ocean dipole event, it would be cooler than average water temperatures across the western part, the eastern part would have um, above average, right? And that would actually lead to rain for Australia. But when you flip it and you have a positive Indian Ocean dipole event, you have positive, you have above average water temperatures here across the West. That would make it very rainy in Africa. We've seen flooding recently um, in Ethiopia. We've seen flooding in India. You saw that flooding in Nepal, but it makes it very dry actually over here closer to Australia with all the sinking air that suppresses any precipitation and clouds forming and rainfall. So we have been in this long running drought across Australia. It continues here well below average when it comes to the rainfall and temperatures have been well above average. We just finished up our warmest year on record more than two uh, degrees above average, 2.7 degrees above average. We have had less than 40% of our average annual rainfall. We normally get about 18. We've had a little less than 10. And so in Australia, that extreme drought has led to this extreme fire situation. Now, what weather do you want to gain some wisdom about? Send us your questions on social media, either tagging AMHQ or using the hashtag weather wisdom. We'll answer them every day at 50 minutes past the hour. I love that. Uh, so interesting. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. have been asking, why, why do we have such a drought? All right. Well, time how quickly it happened. And you don't need a tornado, you know, yeah. in order to get that type of damage either, right? You can just get it from straight line winds or thunderstorm winds. Now, I was talking about how we are so wet. Now, I was talking about Jackson, Mississippi, just for the first two weeks of January. These numbers are going back since December. December 1st. So since Jim was asking me how much they've seen, Jim, since January 1st, we've seen just over five inches in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. All right. In two weeks, this is going back to December 1st. We've seen over a foot. So we're talking eight, nine, 10, even 12 inches, almost 13 inches of rain in places like Huntsville. We're going to see more where that came from. By the way, enjoy this heat and humidity. If you like it, really just soak it in because as we get into next week, it's going to be a shock to the system. I mean, like a complete shock with the cold air that's coming back in. So look at Jacksonville. 
80 degrees and sunny. I mean, even Jacksonville, you know, that's warm for this time of year. Atlanta, the potential for thunderstorms. Memphis, you're going to be in the 50s. And it keeps raining. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. But we have, you know, the jet stream that's bringing the moisture across. We have some energy. We have some surface features. And it's going to stay wet basically through the week. We get a little bit of a break in between systems. But overall, there's still a lot more where that came from here. Another one to two inches for a lot of us here. Nashville, Friday night into Saturday. Again, this is our next big system. System where in the south is going to be rain, but in the north, Jim, it's going to be a lot of snow piling up. It is going to be a lot of snow. Yes, wasn't it? Isn't that ridiculous? It was ridiculous, actually. degrees on, on Sunday. It was just outrageous. Let's take you here into the northeast. Speaking of the northeast, you know, on this date in 1954, Marilyn Man Monroe marries Joe DiMaggio, who, of course, which I learned, spent his whole career at the Yankees. 14 years, is that oh, right? Yeah. Did I read that right? Yes. The, his whole West Coast career. Kid. He's spending the whole career, his whole career. Wait, so I happens here at the Weather Channel, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm 17 Could years. All three one. Of us spend yeah, all of our you're career. I mean, I started in local for nine months, but <laughs> here. here's a look at what uh, Jim was talking about. As we, uh, you know, head through our Thursday, we're going to see a little system that's going to come on through, but it's really as we get into our Saturday when we're going to get our uh, socks knocked off of us here. So here's a look at what's happening. Things are still nice and humid and hot for us in the Northeast. A little bit of rain coming in as we head into the afternoon hours, even some snow uh, for our Wednesday, a little bit of a break. Then we get our Thursday little clip of a weather maker that's coming on through and that's going to lay down our base of snow but it's really the Saturday storm that is going to have us pile it up for us so you know this stuff not loads of it through Thursday some of us will see kind of that five to eight inches overall and we need it we are well below average now this isn't the end of snow across the uh, north coming up in 12 minutes we're going to talk about that storm system I was just teasing you about Jen mm -hmm. that is going to unload on some of us here in yeah. the northeast yeah this is a big and the heat yeah. and the humidity of the tropical the air that we get some storms and damaging wind will be the primary yes threat. and what is the number one killer of people when it comes to weather flooding there we go so here's a look and it doesn't have to be just from a tropical entity right uh, we are seeing very heavy downpours it's rainfall rates and the fact that we're so saturated here the numbers are off the charts of how much we've seen but let's talk about what we have right now first flash flood warnings okay that means that flash flooding is imminent or it's occurring we want to take you down here along the mississippi river river and show you we have that flash flood warning here for east carroll parishes remember if you're in louisiana it's a parish same thing as a county like we have in every other state they just call them parishes there flash flood warning here uh into places like yazoo city just the north of yazoo city it's coming down very quickly over the past three hours we have seen three to five inches in some locations so that's always with snow with rain it's the how quick it's coming down so you, when you're getting an inch an hour that's tough in any situation whether you're dry or it's been wet a lot of lightning too firing up early this morning so you might be up with us early this morning Welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. Anywhere from Texas all the way over into western Georgia, there's a possibility of thunderstorms like we're seeing now, right? This is not going to be a huge tornado outbreak like we saw at the end of last week, but you're going to get a pop here and there. You could get some wind damage out of one of these thunderstorms and or because it is so wet in the ground, a little bit of wind, what happens? Trees and then that hits power lines. So you really can't rule out those power outages, but look at that moisture kind of lingers around. We have a nice little jet that's delivering that moisture here to the south, Jim, and little pops of energy. It continues. We already got to be careful some light for that. Snow too. Uh, so also tough traveling here into the south because of all the dense fog It's really thick. I mean, it expands from the Carolinas all the way up through the plains. Not what you're used to seeing, right? This is more of that hot, humid air that's in place. Visibility is less than a quarter of a mile at times here for some. And as we take you on down into soupy New Orleans, look at that an eighth of a mile in New Orleans. You know, not much better in Baton Rouge, Gulfport, even Hattiesburg, three miles. But it can be really scary when you're driving in fog that is that dense and taking down the visibility that much. Tallahassee, you're in that as well. The same as Destin with only half mile visibility. And then over towards Brunswick, Georgia, you're at a quarter mile visibility. Now, this is all going to be kind of lifting through the day, but it's still hot and humid. So you might have that kind of like hazy air, you know, with the clouds that's sticking around for us here. Uh, Jen, not a ton of sunshine for a lot of us yeah. in the south. No, kind of kind of gray. You know, this air quality down under as thick smoke from the Australian wildfire blankets Melbourne. Now that's causing a your dream vacation, your bucket list trip.
Down Under. Let's bring in Melanie Lieberman, who is the travel editor for The Point Sky. And Melanie, thanks for joining us this morning. So why is now a good time to travel to Australia? You know, some, someone might say, well, I'm not going to Australia, but if there's other natural disasters, these rules can still apply to you as well. So let's talk about tourism's role in the recovery process. You said... The trip is actually planned to Victoria or South Wales uh, in some of these areas that have been hit by the fires. I mean, there may not be places to go. The Point Sky, the Point Sky Gal. That's what I'm going to call you, the Point Sky Gal. <laughs> That's going to be your new name. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. And that was a great tip about how to figure out where yeah, the fires are. And as usual, I just learned about the Point Sky from you. Yeah, the Point Sky Gal. All right, Nash Vegas, a little wet, a little soupy. That doesn't stop the music. Beyond this year, NASA has seven missions lined up that will help us expand our vast knowledge of space. All right, so this morning we're putting on our space suit with Dr. Paul Sutter, who is probably in a pretty good mood after last night's national championship. He is an astrophysicist at Stony Brook University and the Flatiron Institute in New York City. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the big year in exploration, the trip to Mars. There are four missions lined up here. Doc. For crews to launch into space this year, what is the goal of these crews? Does that have to do with Mars or just, you know, tourism? Uh, Blue Origin is hoping to send people into space this year, and there are planned destinations for this company's flagship suborbital rocket. We always love what having you on. I know it is going to be a I mean, very exciting year. I mean, seriously, this is all ramping up this year. That it is. Jen, Appreciate it, all right, we'll wrap well, it up and send it over.